So I feel a little bad about something. You know our love for Brandon Oliver? Yes. Tell me how Devin Singletary's any different. Oh, you didn't. Yeah. He has, um, Oliver had 275 less carries in college than coming <laughs> That's no, I understand. I was. Uh, we loved Brandon Oliver when he was at UB. It was a little wrecking ball. You just throw him in there and let him bounce around. And he wasn't shaking and baking anything. Was, I think if we did a little bit more research, if he if Al, if Oliver didn't play for UB, we probably still would like him, but yeah. not as much. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Watching that guy play firsthand was fun. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Because he was doing things that a player at his size doesn't do. You know, like it's. Oh, you, you're five. You're Get on five, rides seven, at Disney. Want, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs>
there's no expectation for Devin Singletary. Because you've got Gore, you've got McCoy. The one thing that does worry me a little bit, and we saw this with Shady last year, and again, I, I think it's very easy to make excuses for the way that that Shady performed. I, I really do believe it's easy to make excuses for it. But they went from a zone blocking scheme to a traditional blocking scheme, right? Mm -hmm. And look at how Shady was reading gaps, and you tell me, what was that transition like? So, does that is that going to help Devin Singletary? Is that not going to help Devin Singletary? Because if they go back to zone or they're not in zone? If they're not in zone. So Devin Singletary, if, if it were me, I would walk in and say, okay, here's tape of Shady last year. Just want to remind you that the year before that he was in zone blocking. So I want you to watch Shady's film from last year, and I want you to tell me what's happening. Because that's going to be what Singletary's running into. Singletary's going to be going from his own blocking scheme to a traditional blocking scheme. And that's a huge transition. It is. That's a huge transition. It is a very huge transition. But one that running back can easily adjust to. I can't say. You can't say easily adjust. I understand Shady played in, you know, Shady played in his own blocking scheme early in Philly. Then he went to a traditional blocking scheme. Then he came to Buffalo. He was back in his own blocking scheme. So I understand that you can jump and bump. But last year tells me that it's not an easy transition. I don't think that I don't think they they drafted uh, Singletary as a mover and a shaker. I think they drafted him to be a hammer. So I think they're going to He's elusive inside the gaps though. He is. He is. And I think that what they decided to do was he's going to get some tough yards for this guy for for what was left in the draft for them. Mm -hmm. They said, "Listen, we need we need running back. We need to get younger at the running back position. We got Ford. Murphy's not that young. Ford has practice squad eligibility. We got Sing we're going to get a younger guy, Singletary." <laughs> If they do retain Yeldon, they have a younger guy that's a pass-catching guy. Mm -hmm. Now, conceivably, they could go into next season. With Singletary, Singletary Ford, Ford, and Yeldon. Yeldon. Yeah. Like, okay, before they didn't have anybody before right. free agency right. that they could have went into. But now they can go in with those three guys. And uh, let's not forget about Perry, who's going to be the special teams ace right. in that. So if you go into next season, I'm just going, I'm just looking ahead because that seems to be what the mindset of the Buffalo Bills front office happens to be. They look ahead a lot. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, could we be successful with Singletary, Yeldon, uh, Ford, and um, and Perry going into next season? Well, you're not fooling anyone. If Singletary's on the field, you're going to run the ball. If Yeldon's on the field, you're not running the ball. You're passing. Right. Don't right. be gone while I'm talking, you jerk. I know I'm boring, but here's the point. You're not going to fool anybody. It's, if Shady's on the field, you don't know if you're going to run or pass because sure. he has more options. Sure. Gore, Gore's a hammer. He's not really used in the, pass, in the receiving game as that goes. What the hell is that smell? It's Lockport, man. Oh, oh come tight. on. Don't. Again, to me, his weight on this team is going to be earned as to whether he can whether he can see the gaps or not. Because that's the one thing I can tell you I don't know is I don't know what his vision looks like because in zone blocking or in zone blocking scheme it's just easier to see the gaps. Right? So that that's to me gonna be the breaking point for him is how is he gonna read the line as as the plays run down. And is the team gonna go zone? Well they didn't sign any none of these linemen are zone blocking linemen, so I don't think you're going zone. They made a commitment here. Right, they're committed. You're not asking these guys to, to zone block. So, zone blocking typically requires just to break that down a little bit. Zone blocking typically requires guards and centers to really pull um, from the interior to help get out to the gaps. Right. So, that zone blocking scheme, that line really, really pulls, and you need super athletic, typically leaner linemen to play in zone blocking. And the Bills just didn't go that direction. No, they just didn't go that. So they're probably going traditional. But, um, you know, Singletary has to learn how to take snaps from traditional running back sets because that's what the Bills run. They don't – Allen's in shotgun and passing situations. Allen's under center in running situations. It's very predictable. That's what that's what Dable's offense was last season. Is that going to change? I don't know. But – you know, there's a lot on the table that Singletary has to learn, but I don't think you draft a guy in the third round thinking that he's not going to be, not going to possibly be your starter. The thing that that hit me and hit me the hardest was the fact that the Bills traded two fourth rounders to go up and get Knox, and then one of the Bills' fourth round picks, Bryce Love, got picked with. 
that one burned my ass because here's this running back that I was in in adoration over was Bryce Love. I'm like Bills should pick him. Bills should pick him, and he gets drafted with the Bills pick. The Bills didn't have it anymore. We got drafted with the Bills pick. I, I you think, were right. Yeah, I wasn't wrong. Right, Bryce, Bryce Love in the fourth yeah. to the Bills. Yeah, I wasn't wrong. To the Bills pick, but. Um, the fact still remains with Devin Singletary is there's there's a lot to like. There is. There's a lot to like. Usage concerns me a little bit. Yes. The system that he's coming from concerns me a little bit. The competition he played against? I'm, I'm not really worried about competition, right? Because look at it this way, Mar. Once you get past the line of scrimmage, there's 11 guys trying to kill you. It, it's it's a right. numbers game at that well, point. Yeah, that's, right. Right. <laughs> you know, that's it. And, and he is more of a pinball. Right. So it's not like... Um, well, and you look at his profile, he's a harder back to bring down because smaller frame, he's not light. He's no. not 160 pounds. No. You know? No, he's not going to He's not gonna burn an 80-yarder on you. No. Um, he may burn a 50-yarder breaking seven tackles. Mm-hmm. I don't know how that's going to transition at the, at, the, at the next level. Right. Um, but uh, it, it definitely brings... Does he bring a different aspect to the running game than, than, you, than what you already have. I think well, that's the interesting point that you had brought up. You're like, well, what if you walk into next season with Devin Singletary, Ford, and TJ Yeldon as your three backs, and there's no inside – that's only inside presence there. You're yeah. going to ask Yeldon to get to the outside. That's what you're going to ask Yeldon to do is, is get to the outside. Well, that's why you have McKenzie and, and those gadget guys to get right, to the exactly. outside. Right, exactly. Right, yeah, I feel you there. But, the, but that's – if you're walking into next season – like that, you're walking into next season with guys who can't get to the edge. You look at this season, tell me who can get to the edge right now. Who can get to the edge? Who gets, you're going to tell me McCoy can still get to the edge? Can, I can't make that promise to you. Who can get to the edge in New England? Well, Sony Michelle can. You think he can? He's a first-round pick, though. So you got Michelle, Burkhead, mm-hmm. now Harris. Mm-hmm. Who else is there? White. Yeah. So you have a pass-catching back. You got just a hammer mm-hmm. in Burkhead, mm-hmm. and then you got Harris, who's a, another hammer, mm-hmm. and then you got Michelle, who can, who can, can do, do it anything. all. Yeah. Who can do it all. So, why did they draft Harris again when they had a, a number one pick in Michelle? You're talking about a team that already has a number one running yeah, back. Yeah, I understand. From a but... from an offensive coordinator who's. But they've pounded Burkhead into the ground. But no, my point is, I'm not. I'm not really so much focused on Burkhead as I am. Uh, the fact the is, theory behind it. you got Dable who came from that mold mm-hmm. of a committee running back system. Yeah, you got to have a hammer. You got to have a receiving back. Mm-hmm. Now it seems like they have more versatility with Michelle as far as that goes. Right. right. But he was a first rounder. Now, now you draft Harris, who was a fourth. Was he even taken in the fourth or the fifth? No, he's earlier than that. Okay. I thought he was third round pick. Oh, if Harris, then it, then well, it's just backwards. Then if the Bills decide to do that. So what's wrong? What's what's against them taking a running back next year as well? I oh mean, sure, there's nothing against it, right? But oh yeah. It's the point is that you you have no edge presence with this running back committee right now. Who gets to the edge? Yeldon's still the only one that gets to the edge. Again, I can't promise you that McCoy can. I just can't. And what, from what we saw Gore? last year, Gore's not getting to the edge. Are you? Well, now, what are you deciding as the edge? I want you to. Because McCoy doesn't necessarily have to get to the edge. He just has the threat to get to the edge because then guys widen out and he cuts it underneath. Mm-hmm. That's what it, and that's why your complaint of a zone blocking scheme is so much better for him because he has the threat of going outside. You got the guys who are just going to wash them out. He's going to yeah. cut back up underneath. Right. Yeah. McCoy excels in zone blocking. Singletary clearly excelled in zone blocking. He right? did. But... When I talk about somebody getting to the edge, I'm talking about the seven and eight gaps. I'm talking about getting outside the tackle. No one can get out there anymore. Oh, come on. Nobody gets outside come anymore. Come on. Nobody. There's too much speed on the defenses in the NFL right so now. So are you saying that the Bills running back committee is built for today's NFL? Is that what you're, is that what you're telling me? Amazing. That's what I said. <laughs> I didn't say that, but what I'm saying is a lot of these guys that try to bounce out, mm-hmm. that do it in college, mm-hmm. and they end up running for 80 yards. They can't do that anymore. 
Chris Johnson was the last guy I saw that could bounce outside on a, on a, on a defense. Well, I mean, he held he the a 40. Two. Yeah, he had the 40 record um, ever. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Could Barkley do it? Maybe. Could Elliott do it? Maybe. I haven't seen him. But those guys are more, they'll run it inside, then break it out mm-hmm. and take it, take it the distance. They don't usually go. You don't run a sweep. In the NFL, because guys are too damn fast. Then why, then why do you have a fullback on this roster? He's not going to be on it. Shouldn't be. Fullback is not a position in the NFL anymore. I understand. I understand. But my condolences to John Kuhn, Aaron so, Ripkowski. Yeah, I know, right? Moose Johnston, <laughs> Mike Allstott. Mike. I think he was not a fullback. Mike Allstott. He wasn't. Oh god. Fine. So, fine. so okay. Peyton Hillis was a fullback. Yeah. Right? Okay. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> With running backs in today's NFL, the way you get to the seven and eight gap are those jet sweeps. That's how you get to seven and eight. That yeah, that's the only way you're going to get outside fast enough. Or that stupid pass that they do when they they shotgun it to the quarterback and he just he, he volleyballs it to the running back. Mm-hmm. Um, no, but you can't. It, I, I think it's very difficult to get outside now in the NFL. Well, Bills running back committee, you don't have to worry about that. Yeah. You don't have to. You don't have to worry about that. Who's the fast? Is Murphy the fastest running back we have on the roster? Yeah. Or Perry? Uh, Perry's probably faster. Yeah. I think Perry's probably faster. Murphy's a lot bigger than Perry, so I would think Perry's faster. While I don't hate the pick, I know why they drafted that position. Mm-hmm. But yeah. I could have. I, I, I could I, could I, I think of? Could I think of any better running backs? I'd rather have. You know, and I, it still hurts me to say this because I don't want to feel like I'm questioning the Bills because they have earned the opportunity to, for me to relieve my skepticism of them, right? Like, they, sh- I shouldn't be a skeptic of what they've done because they've really done a great job getting their team ready for the draft, you know, as far as the free agents, whom they've drafted, um, you know, in the past. And they've earned my, uh, they've, they've earned the right for me not to be a skeptic. I still like Bryce Love a lot better than Devin Singletary. You know, it's it, that it it still it still gets me a little bit. No, I and I understand your uh, your pain. It's because there's certain players that you gravitate toward. I'm the same way. But the yeah. other thing that was the you you're emotional, but you're rational at the same time because what you what you did was you're like saying he doesn't have to play right away. Mm-hmm. You can give love another year yep. to recover. However his injury was. Maybe that scares some teams off. We don't know. You're going to put him on FedEx Field now where his career's over? Yeah. So, um, <laughs> yeah. that being said, he didn't have to play right away. So, your emotional attachment to him was also rooted in, in rationality, and mm-hmm. I understand that. Um, I would I would have liked to have Bryce Love here, but if they're, they, their mindset going into the draft is, we need a guy that can play right now. Uh-huh. And... Maybe Singletary's that guy. If you're of the mindset you draft a third guy in the third round that's going to start, but not start, but play, mm-hmm. they want a guy right now. They don't want to wait a year. Yeah, it's the, the question marks get me a little bit. The usage, the the scheme that he's coming from, those things kind of get me a little bit. That's that's my holdup. It really is. That's my holdup. I really think because it's a money I, ball I, pick. I like, I like him. When you turn on the tape, once he gets to the gap, I like him. But it, the problem is it's pretty clear where he's going. Like, it's... So Trent him Richardson would see these gaps. Oh, stop it! Just you would—you were all over Alabama today. I know, I know. Roll Tide, Ingram, Henry. Mm-hmm. Who haven't we mentioned today? That's a Harris, uh, Harris uh, Jacobs, Yeldon. <laughs> It's—I get the single Terry pick. I do. I get it. Right. I—I'm not in love with it. I wasn't in love with it because there's still. And I get it's a third round running back. Okay, the argument's been made. It's a third round running back. You're not going to love him, right? Mm-hmm. But I want to not the things that I don't like. I want to be able to say that we can mitigate that with system scheme, and I, we can't say that, right? We can't we can't accommodate system scheme for him right now, and that and that's why the pick gets me, you know, a little sideways.